So we're going to wrap up with uh, finishing up this and then dive into some more complex stuff. Uh, for the rest of the semester, I'm going to be using Zoom instead of YouTube so that if you've got a question, you can ask through audio right away because we're going to be getting into far more complex stuff. We have our animation hierarchy happening, and I'm going to finish up this logo. For the background, I used an effect called ramp, uh, gradient ramp. And basically, I used a radial ramp. The ramp scatter is how smooth that shading is going to be. You could also blend it with the original if you need to. But what I did since I'm lazy is I duplicated it and then used a blending mode to get the look I want. I want to texture this X just for some interest. And the fast, easy way of doing that is with an alpha mat and a texture image. I'm going to use this ice. Go put it down here at the bottom and scale it up by pressing the S key. OK, so if I want to keep this animation and use it as an alpha mat for the texture, what's the one thing I need to do? Precompose just the layers for the X because an alpha mat is one layer revealing one layer. And I'm going to move all attributes into a new comp. There we go. So this is the shape. This is the image. On the image, I go to the track mat. These are my modes. These are my switches. So I'm going back to modes. So on the texture layer, I just choose my alpha mat. And there's my texture. And that is working just fine. This also got the studio logo, which I don't want. So I'm going to take this out and just put it up here. There we go. All right, so basically, we've got our motion and our idea. Uh, and I'm going to throw an invert on here, just see what happens. See if that helps with my contrast, because tonally it's too similar. There we go. <clears throat> That's working better. Just going to blend it a little bit with the original. OK, so I basically want this X to draw on, move across the screen, and reveal the word studio. OK, and I've got a few ways I can do that. I am going to use an adjustment layer. You can get there by going layer new or just right clicking any empty space inside of the timeline. Now, any effect I put on the adjustment layer will affect every layer below it. For fast camera cheats, I use transform. Position, scale, rotation, and opacity are all here. It's the same as any other layer. But this time, if I put on an adjustment layer, I move everything below it at the same time. So it's actually a very useful little trick if you've got to scale down a bunch of stuff or have it move together without losing your animation. Put this up here. OK, so let's have this. OK, I'm going to hit undo. And when I'm all done, I'm probably going to pre-compose the adjustment layer and the pre-comp together and the ice, but not the background. Keep that separate so the background doesn't move with my adjustment layer. So the draw on ends here. So I'm going to do scale and position and work backwards. I'm going to scale up so that it looks like the camera is zooming out. Additionally, I'm going to do, need to move it over to the left a lot. I'm not worrying about my background yet. There we go. Maybe even more to the left. Then 
That's perfect. So I've got my fake camera motion. And I've got my texture, all good. So I'm going to pre-compose these together. And I'll just call this X motion, move all my attributes. So now I still have that camera motion happening, but I don't have the background shifting, which is nice. The other solution will have been to scale this up, uh, the background image. Like that. All right. So what I'm going to do is put the studio below it so that this is on top. And let's try doing this. So I've got nothing selected because if I have something selected, I'm going to make a mask and I don't want a mask. I want a shape. So I'm going to roughly follow this side of the X. Doesn't need to be super precise. And go a little bit outside of it. All right. So I've got that working. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So this is where my motion ends, right? Let's see, I'm going one frame at a time, right there. So if I hit P and S for position and scale, and then work backwards, I'm going to scale it up first, and then move it over. And that should roughly follow it. And I'm going to put this above my Word Studio and use this shape as an alpha mat. Let's see how that's working. Look at that. See now right here, we're seeing a little bit of the text, which we don't want the fast fix. It's covered up here. I just hold down alt and hit the bracket next to the letter P to trim that layer or option that this changes your start point and that one changes your end point. The start is the beginning of the shape layer. The end is the end of it. So I just use this. Now it's moving fine and I'm happy with that. Like such. And let's say I wanted to fake a light flicker. So I'm going to make a black solid just for the fun of it. Push this one more step further. Hit T for opacity. I'm going to change where my layer starts. I'm going to put an expression in there. I'll try the wiggle expression. And let's try five times a second, 300. See what that looks like. Click out of it. See, just a little bit of extra interest to uh, add some life to my logo, like such. Any questions on any of the finishing touches I did or why I did them that way? Um, the wiggle will happen as long as that layer is there. So I trimmed my layer so it would start when I wanted it to. Another thing you could do is use a slider expression. So that would be I'll add a new layer, a new adjustment layer. I mean, throw my slider on there and I'm going to move this all the way to the beginning. So let's say I want to start here. I'm going to hit E for effect. There's my slider. So what I do is I select the first number, the number of times per second. I grab the pick whip from the expression, not the layer, from the expression, and I'm going to drag it to the word slider. 
zero is off and one is on. So I'm going to set this to one at the beginning. Let's turn this off first. I'll move forward a little bit and I'll set it to one. If I want the flickering to stay on for a little bit, I'm going to press the U key to see my keyframes. Oh, I didn't click on there. So there's one. Go back a little bit. Let's set this to zero here. Okay, now I'm going to hit U. So there's my keyframes. I'm going from zero to one. And let's say it stays on. So I'm just going to duplicate my last keyframe and then go back down to zero. There we go. Now it's starting to wiggle just as the logos come on. Like that. Yeah, so you can use the slider. And when you do use the slider, you select the first number in the expression, the number of times per second and drag it up to the slider. Or you could just have your layer with the expression come in a little later. It's up to you. You can do that with flickering stuff like this. No one's going to notice it. All right, any other questions? All right, so I'm going to call this 5B and send it out when we're done tonight, just so you all can see this. Um, for reference. Okay, so now we're going to start the more dense part of the lecture. Now, I've shown you how to do trim pads before. I'm going to make a uh, change this back to 8-bit. Go here. I'll call this paint effect. Let's wait for my computer to catch up. All right, let me purge it. It's running a little slow. All right. So we've learned about trim pads. I'm going to turn off this fill, turn on stroke, make a bright color, sure. So there's the stroke. And if I go add trim pads, I can choose to animate on the start or the end. The end is the last point I drew. That's a trim path. So we've already covered that. There's another way of getting that look. And I suggest you all follow along for this. So that way, if you don't understand something, you can uh, ask right away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a solid layer. And I'm just going to make it blue. Hit OK. And I'm going to give you all a moment to draw your solid layer. <clears throat> or I mean, add your solid layer. <clears throat> and under the effects, we're going to add stroke. There's a lot of different strokes you can add. But for this one, we're just going to do stroke. We're throwing a stroke effect on the layer. And under the paint style, we're going to set it to on transparent. What that means is if I've got another solid behind it, I'll make it a, a light blue. Look about there. That just means you'll see the background below it. So if there's a texture or whatever, you'll see it because it's going to be painting onto a transparent layer. So here's our stroke effect. And we're going to draw a new path. So you got to make sure this the solid layer is selected. And I'm just going to draw like a little squiggly line down the screen. 
And I'll make my brush size 200. And let's see what happens if I have on original. Okay, we'll do on transparent. There we go. And I had to turn on mask one once I drew it. Now I can see it. So once everybody has that, just say yes. You have to turn on mask one up here at the top drop down to show the mask that you drew. And I'm going to set my brush hardness to 100. I made my brush hardness 100, so it's a nice hard edge. Uh, I changed the spacing to zero. Now you'll notice there's start and end. And we already know from trim paths, that's what that's going to do. So I'm going to start here and animate just the end. And I'll go, let's say, two seconds and make it 100%. So it's drawing on. And as it's drawing on, I'm going to have it start drawing off, like right about here. So I'm going to click the start stopwatch. Wait till it's off the screen. And I set that to 100. So now it's going to draw itself on and draw itself off. Just like that. I'll show you. So I hit U for my keyframes. First, I did the end. That's the last point. I went from zero to 100. And then I picked a spot where it was on the screen, pretty dense. And I said, now I'm going to have it draw off, which is the start. So I went from zero to 100 with that. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. No problem. All right. So next, I'm going to add a new layer, a new solid layer, layer new solid. I'll call this fractal. Color doesn't matter. And I'm going to hit OK. And in effects, I'm going to add fractal noise right here on there. Now, a fractal is any image that was then duplicated 200% and the opacity changed a little bit less. And then that layer was duplicated and made 200% bigger and the opacity changed a little bit less. And then that layer was duplicated 200% and the opacity was changed a little bit less until you get this dense fog like um, that you can pass through. Hopefully that helps explain it a little bit better. But uh, so you think about it as going back in space. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this fractal as a displacement map to make our stroke look more painterly or like a liquid. So the first thing we're going to need to do is increase the contrast on our fractal. Because white will do 100% of something and black will do nothing or the opposite, depends upon what you do with your maps. And values of gray will either do a positive or negative thing based upon how much white or black is inside of them. I'm going to turn up my brightness a little bit. I'm just going blind here. OK, so the water is going downwards. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the time expression to my evolution. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and click that stopwatch, type in time, asterisk, and I'll try 200, and then click out that field. Let's see what that looks like. And I'm going to do a higher number. I want a little bit more change than that. Let's try 500. Click out. That's better. All right, so I've got some constant motion happening. Next, I got to say, where is this going? Well, that will be my offset turbulence. I'm going to want it to go down. So down would be adding to the Y. So I'm going to go to the beginning of this layer, go a little bit past, and let's have this go down a whole lot. So if I add to it, 
I'm going to make it like 10 times. Let's see how fast that's going. You just do it by eye. I'm going to drop down my preview res. OK, I can live with that. Looks like, you know, water flowing downwards. So we're starting to get there. I'm going to hit save because Adobe products crash a whole lot. Are there any ex any questions like I keyframed the down because the fluid's moving down and I've got the evolution changing over time just to add some life and some interest to this fractal. So my next step is I'm just going to pre-compose this fractal layer because that's normally the best way to keep your effects working properly. Uh, so I'll just call this fractal PC and always click move all attributes in. Very rarely will you not do that, but sometimes you don't do that. Now I'm going to click the eyeball icon on my fractal to hide it because I don't need to see it. It's going to be <laughs> invisible, but it's going to be driving the displacement of our stroke. So with my stroke solid, I'm going to call the stroke so we can see what's what. Okay, that's my stroke layer. I'll call this background. I've got my stroke layer selected and I'm going to put a displacement map effect on it. I'm going to leave this up for everyone to see. So you can see what's going to happen. I'm going to move my playhead forward a little bit and everyone can see the stroke, correct? Okay, so this displacement map needs to know what we're using as our map and it's the fractal. So right here where it says displacement map layer, I'm going to choose fractal PC and I'm also going to use effects and masks. So now if I increase the horizontal or vertical, now we can see that it's displacing it. And already it looks more painterly, splotchy and liquidy and less like that boring geometric shape we had. We always try and push our work the furthest. So I'm going to teach you a technique called look at this, edit that. OK, here's how it works. You're going to need to double click on your fractal pre comp and open up the fractal and select the layer that has the fractal on inside it. Are you in 8 bits per channel or 32 bits per channel? If you go to your project panel down here at the bottom by the trash can, if you hold down Alt or Option and click on 8 BPC, it'll change to 16, 32, back to 8 again. Make sure you're at 8 bits per channel, then see if that helps. Here is how Look at This, Edit That works. I'm in my fractal pre-comp. I've got my fractal layer selected, and here's the fractal effect in my effects control panel. Right next to the words effects control is a padlock. I'm going to click that padlock on. And I'm going to show you why we're doing this. And I'm teaching you to look at this, edit that. We're going to go back to our paint effect composition. And you'll notice now I've still got my fractal noise effect up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go big and show you. I'm going to change the contrast. And look, it's changing over here. And I'm going to lower it. Now I can see in real time what changing my fractal does to the displacement map. Does everybody understand that? This is how you dial in your look and work like a professional. Look at this, edit that. So I can now adjust my fractal while seeing how it influences the displacement map. This is how you really get the look you want. Just a little bit of patience. I'm even going to try a different type of fractal and I can see what it's doing very quickly and very easily. Try dynamic. Let's try spline just for the fun of it. And remember, you want different looks for different motions. And 
it looks like the darker I set my brightness, the more rough my look is getting. I'm going to up my contrast a little bit, but not too much, because then I start losing all that fine detail. So it's like between 300 and 400 is what's working for my settings here. And I'm going to drop my complexity down to three. Nah, I'm going to make it nine. I'm going to make it larger. And that's giving me more of a mess and a, a roughness to it. And then if I want, I could twirl down my transform and I could make the scale of the fractal larger if I want to see less roughness. Or I could scale down, make it even smaller so I'm seeing more of the fractal so it looks like spray paint. You see how adjusting the scale of your fractal greatly influences how it works with the displacement map? It's all about dialing in your look. This is how to work like a pro. What's going to happen if I change my blending mode? See, that's going to influence it too. The default was normal. Go keep it there for now. And there we go. I've got a much better look to my fractal. Here's the one thing to remember. When you've got the look you want, click off on the padlock so it opens up again. This way you can get back to your layers and make whatever changes you want and get out of look at this edit that mode. And when you've got it looking the way you want, just click on the stroke layer again. I'm going to pretend this is water flowing down the screen. So for that, I select my stroke layer. I'm in the stroke effect color. I'm going to give it a more watery look. Like find a blue I like. Do about here. You can pick whatever blue you like. There's mine. I'm going to go to the displacement. I'm going to add a little bit more maximum vertical displacement to it like that in that direction so that it looks like as it's falling down, there's flex falling behind it, like little droplets of water, especially down at the bottom. That looks gorgeous. That's the look I want. And I'm just going to go to full res and take a look at it real quick to see it more accurately. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's what I want. I changed my maximum vertical displacement to a positive number. I'm very happy with that. So it's another way of fine tuning. OK, so I've got my color. Now I'm going to hit save. And remember what I've always taught you. If you've got one thing done, can you use it to push your work further? So I'm going to duplicate my stroke layer. And I'm going to make it a little bit brighter of watercolor. So that's my B, B for brightness. And I'm going to desaturate it a little bit. Hit OK. And I'll move forward a little bit. Now I'm going to make the brush size under the stroke smaller. So now I'm seeing the darker water with the lighter water. So that's something. It's pushing it a bit further. And I'm going to go into a full for my preview res. Now, another thing I can do to easily push this is adjust my maximum and vertical, uh, the horizontal and vertical displacement. Not too much, but just a little bit. That's going to randomize it enough to give it its own life. Like such. It's not perfectly following the first layer, which is what I want. And I'll make it a little bit thinner. All right. And I'll do one final duplication. And this one will be, oops. I want to duplicate my stroke layer. I was clicked on the wrong thing. I'll make this even brighter. And I'll make it even thinner for the brush size. And I'll adjust the displacement even more. Like such. And let's see what we got. Parts of it are a little choppy there. I could fine tune that if I want. But uh, overall, I'm getting something pretty interesting. There we go. And again, I would fine tune that to get the look I want. So 
Let's push this one step further and then we'll move on. I'm going to take all three of my stroke layers, pre-compose them, and I'll call it water. Hit move all attributes. Now I'm going to draw right on the letter. I'll just do a letter I lowercase. And we'll pretend this is our logo. Like such. I'm going to place it below the water. And one thing I could do is right here when it's fully covered, I could just trim that layer with Alt and the P, the bracket next to the P. So now it looks like it was revealed on that way. That's one thing I could do. Another thing I could do is set this to, let's try a Luma mat just for the fun of it. See, we're getting that effect. So it's like, if I wanted this to stay on, I would not animate the start stopwatch. See how we're getting a pretty interesting effect happening there. That's with Luma, because Luma works off of gray values. If I switch it to alpha, see, you get a nice inky reveal and removal. So I'm just showing you how you can create something and then use it for multiple things later on down the road. Any questions on that? Speaking of which, funny that we're using this right now because the next part of the lecture is exactly something similar to this. But you've seen it a million times in your life. Now you're going to know how it's done. The first step is going into Canvas, Files, you know, Art 228 Virtual, all slides and art files. Now I'm going to guess that it's in week five. Let me see if I'm right. Yep. So from the week five folder in Canvas, I want you to download the bottle and the Coca-Cola logo. And I'm not sponsored by Coca-Cola. It was just the easiest PNGs I could find with an effect everybody has seen. So it's motion graphics in Canvas. Files, Art 228 Virtual, All Slides and Art Files, Week 5. Please get the Coca-Cola logo and the bottle of water. Well, I should just say the bottle. And then when you got those, we're going to import them into After Effects. So first, I'm going to clean this up with some bins. There we go. Now I can import my Coca-Cola stuff. And I'm going to make a new composition for it. Uh, I'll just call it soda, 19, 20, 10, 80, 24, 10 seconds. Sure, why not? And I'm going to bring in my bottle and my logo. And clearly, my bottle's way too small. So I'll just scale that up to about there. Sure, why not? And I'll click off the eyeball for my logo. You've seen using displacement maps to roughen up geometric shapes in After Effects. You've also seen roughen edges like such to make it look less geometric and less computerized. Now I'm going to show you another one. We've probably used it before, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a new, let's try a solid. We might need a path, but I'm going to try solid. And what we're going to put on this is turbulent displace. And this, I'm going to bring it down to about halfway down the screen, just so I can see what's happening here. So if I try the amount, the size. OK, that's not what I want. So I'm going to delete that solid. And instead, I'm going to try a shape layer. 
That should be what we need. So let me turn off the stroke. Make a shape layer larger than the water bottle. Let's see what happens if I put turbulent displace on my shape. Yep. Everyone see the difference between shape layers and solids? Since shape layers have paths, you can edit them more. Whereas solids don't have paths. They're just good for throwing effects and using for solid colors. So shape layer is what I wanted. So I'm going to, let's just try this. I did 104 for my size and 114. And I'm gonna leave my offset alone. But watch what happens when I move this up and down the screen. See, as it moves, it's already displacing like a liquid. So when I move it up, that's what we get which is what we want. So I'm going to move it down so it's off the bottle. And I'm going to keyframe the position for this. I'm going to call this liquid one. So we know it's our shape layer, it's liquid one. And I'm going to keyframe the position. So let's say it takes four seconds to fill up the bottle. Why not? And I'm going to move it so that it fully covers the bottle. I want to go a little bit past it, but not so much that it doesn't cover the bottle anymore. Okay. So we've got this, but now it's a little too wide. So I'm going to non-uniformly scale it down, make it a little thinner, so that we have more water rippling inside the bottle instead of outside the bottle makes it look like it has a bit more volume to it. I'm happy with that. I've got my interesting thing happening. So I just click on, this is the reveal. You know, the mask goes over your face like a Halloween mask. Here's what's being revealed. I choose track mat alpha. And now you got a refreshing bottle being filled up. And you can adjust this as you need to, your liquid right here. I could say, let's do more, more size. Let's do less amount, more size. Now let's do more amount here. Let's see how that looks. See, now I've got that little chunk taken out of the bottom. And fixing that fixed it. But that is nowhere near interesting looking enough. So I'm going to undo. Look at my original numbers. One hundred four and one fourteen. Okay, so let's try. All right, here's a fun thing to do. If I'm not happy with this, see, there's that. I'm like, yeah, that's that's kind of fun. And we all agree that's kind of fun, but I don't think it's fun enough, okay? So let's try offset turbulence. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right and left with it. But you know what? That's not fun. I'm going to try something fun. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to try this. this is theoretical. So watch first. I'm going to make a null. And a null is just an invisible thing. And I'm going to hit P for position. And I'm going to right click on the position. Separate the dimensions. I'm going to try holding down Alt or Option on the X. Let's try wiggle. Let's try three times a second, comma, 60. And we're getting some side to side motion. That's pretty good. So now let's try this offset turbulence. We hit E for effect. This turbulent displace. Here's my offset turbulence. 
and I'm going to try Alt or Option clicking. Now I've got a pick whip. And let's see what happens if I pick whip this to X position and click out of my expression. See if that, that looks like it worked. Now I've got far more life in it because it's tied to that wiggle. So let's change this amount to 400. Hit the spacebar to preview it. See how I've got much more interest happening in it? So 400 is a bit too radical. Let's try 200. Let's try twice a second. A little bit more randomness to it. See like that. Everyone see the difference? I got a lot more interest with very little effort by using this wiggle. Let's try. No, so we'll keep that at 104. Let's up the size a bit. And let's try turbulent smoother. Oops. See if that looks any better. Nah, that was just some uh, experimenting that didn't work out. Okay, so we're pretty happy with this. A little happy with that. So here's what I can now do. I've got my liquid. I can duplicate this layer, reveal it, and we can say, what color is Coca-Cola? It's kind of a brown. So I'm going to make it about there. Okay, fine. I'm going to duplicate my soda bottle, Command D, put it on top. Use that as an alpha mat. And I can hide the layer below it. So now we've got that happening. That's well and good, but let's push this a little bit because that's why you're here to learn something, but then push it. So I'm going to duplicate my liquid one more time. And I'm going to brighten it a little bit like a highlight. And let's see, I'm going to duplicate my soda bottle one more time, put it on top. Make an alpha mat out of that. And this one, I'm going to change the settings a little bit. And I'll have it come in a little earlier. So I'll have these slide down a few frames. There's the lighter one. And then what should happen is the darker one should come in over it. So let's do I'm going to grab my liquid. That's the thinner one. And what I'm going to do is here's what we got. I'm going to mask this shape. Uh, so if I, let's see if this works. I'm just going theoretical here. So here's my shape layer for the brighter one. If I click this button right here with my shape layer select. So this is to draw a shape layer. This is to make a mask of the shape. There we go. Now we've got something interesting happening. So I'm going to Put that back where it was. And I'm going to make it smaller. All right, that's still a bit too big. So 
I'm just gonna make a nice thin little amount. There we go. And now I have to do is change the timing of this, have it come in one frame sooner to close up that gap between my layers. And I can just keep sliding those layers around a little bit until I get them to where I want. And it's working perfectly, but that's just showing you one way of uh, fine tuning your effect. I wonder what would happen if I move this mask down a little bit. Like, I think I drew it too high. That could also be causing it. See there, I just a touch too. That's working better. I'm happy with that. And uh, let's tighten this up a little bit. So it's not so high of a highlight. It's all about the little tweaks you do. That's looking a little bit better. And I could just keep fine tuning it until I get the exact look I want. But any questions about that? How using that shape and a layer mat, I mean an alpha mat, if I wanted to add more interest, I'd have to keep duplicating that bottle shape until it looked and moved the way that I wanted it to. And again, I could always adjust the amount as well to have it work the way I want it to. And I could also set it to a different wiggle with a different null moving in an opposite direction. That would work too. So, uh, and last but not least, let's say I'm happy with all this. I could grab all this, pre-compose it, call it big liquid. It's my Coca-Cola logo, which is way too big now compared to that. So let's scale this down a little bit. Okay, good. Let's put it above the bottle for a second. We can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So let's say we've got this happening. What we can then do is I can grab one of these bottles, hit Command C to copy, paste it into this scene so it's the same size. We can use it as an alpha mat for the logo. And we'll wait till it's right about here. And what I can then do is I can take this logo, hit P for position, go forward a little bit to about here. Now I'm going to work backwards. If I move this off of the mask, off of the uh, alpha mat, it's going to look like the bottle's rotating because that's pushing in. You're tricking the eye. Everybody see that? Did it look like the bottle was spinning around? I cheated that using an alpha mat and that logo. And if I wanted to, I could... Uh, Let's try CC Lens. I can bulge it out a little bit. See that subtle little bit is what's going to make it look spherical on the bottle. like such. So that's just a fun little thing to test out, try. And I could always do fill, make it white if I wanted to, you know, unlimited possibilities.
in week six, there's a file called green screen MP4. I'm going to download that. I'm going to make a new composition. Hit OK. Bring in my green screen footage. And just drag it down here. And there's a young me. So full of hope till his dreams were dashed by life. All right, so I'm going to turn off the alpha. And you'll notice this is solid black here. I did that on purpose. Sometimes when you get green screen footage, there'll be clips for holding the green screen together or someone's hands for holding it. So you're usually doing some type of masking. I did that on purpose. So I'm going to select this and select that area that needed to be masked and choose subtract. So now if I click here, you can see that area is gone. Ta-da. So always look around for stuff you got to mask out of your shot. And uh, sometimes if it's not evenly lit, you got to mask out the shadows that you don't need or want, I should say. OK, so here is green screening in a nutshell. Use key light. Throw it on here like such. And you choose a green near the person or whatever you're green screening out. I'm going to turn this off because it's going to be distracting. And I'm going to make a new solid. And I'll try white. Throw it behind me. And now, since I've got a lighter background, you can see we're nowhere near done. That looks like garbage. And here's how you fix it. So I threw my key light on. I picked a green. In final result, change it to screen mat. And just like in Photoshop, when you're doing layer masks, you're going to want pure black and pure white. What's in black will be invisible, and what's white will be visible. So white reveals, black conceals. So I've got a little bit more work to do. Plus, you can see my shirt. You can see parts of my face. So this needs to be filled in and that needs to be filled in. To do that, I simply twirl down screen mat and I just clip black and clip white. Let's do black first. Already you see this corner where the light was uneven filling in. The second you get pure black or pure white, you stop. You don't go past it because then you'll start getting an ugly green screen removal. Now I'm going to do less for my pure white. Right about there. That's looking good. I'm happy with that. I just go back to my final result. Now, what I need to do, the reason I'm doing it this way, you've all seen low budget movies where there's flickering and noise and grain from the green screen being removed improperly. So here's how to avoid that. I've got pure white and pure black. I'm going to use this as an alpha mat. So what that means is I duplicate my green screen footage one more time. And when you're dealing with video clips, you do not want the audio on more than once. You'll double up the audio and it'll sound bad. So you only want it on once. The top will have key light on. The bottom, I'm going to turn off the effect. Remember, just clicking the word effect. FX turns it off. So you go, well, why'd you do that? Because I'm using the top as a mask. So this has key light removed. I mean, on it. See, it's already removed. So there's the green screen's gone. And I turned off key light on the one below it. I'm going to use the top layer as my alpha mat. And now I've got my perfect green screen. Lastly, I'm going to select both of these, right click, choose pre-compose, call it something that means something to you, move all attributes. And you'll notice as I zoom in, it's not a perfect key. We'll fix that in a second. There's also a little bit of green spill wrapping around, which is unavoidable. 
I'll throw some de-spiller on it. Let's try spill suppressor. I'm putting it on the pre-comp because if I make any changes to the original layers, that will mess up my green screen removal. So the green spill is already gone. I can adjust this mat more if I want using a mat refiner, but instead of doing that, I'm going to go to my actual screen layer here and I'm going to increase my screen gain a little bit, just a touch. And that's getting rid of that ugly green that was around me. Now it's gone into my face a little bit. So it's your screen mat. Hide this. Turn this back on. Okay. See? So I've got to adjust my clip white. Like such. Because I warned you, if you go too much, it's going to mess you up. So now I can go back to my final result here. Click this on. I'll reapply my alpha mat. Go back out. And let's try fixing that mat now. Let's try refined soft mat. Now you'll notice if I go negative, it's going to go inward. So let's go in a little bit. Feather it a tiny bit, not too much. And that's looking pretty good. So I just went in a tiny bit, softened up a little bit of the feather. And there's our green screen. And that's because I dropped the preview resolution. There we go. Just a reminder, if you're going to do any effects, you got to pre-compose your green screen footage and put them on that because let's do hue saturation. Let's say I wanted a black and white version of myself. If I put it here, it keeps the keyed out version because it's on the pre-comp. I'm going to hide that. If I put it here, it's going to mess up everything because of the uh, green screen. So you don't want to go doing that. I'll just mess around while I've got some time. Instead of fractal noise, this time I'm going to do turbulent noise. And just remember, when you're working with noise, you can make it as large or small as you want. You know, you can make it as complex as you like. It's all about playing around. Because no one really knows what they're going to actually get the first time through. It's all about playing. But I do know I'm going to use the time expression, the evolution. So this is constantly moving. Time. Asterisk. Let's try 350. Hit the space bar. This will go a little bit slower because I increased the complexity to 14 to get more detail. So it's going to need some more contrast. Let's see what this does, just for the fun of it. Put a displacement map on here, on our text. Use our Turbulent noise. Let's 
And remember, different noise, different settings will give you different displacement. It's all about the look you're trying to create. And like I said, the more complex you make your fractal, the longer it'll take to render. Now, since I did a larger size for my transform in that fractal, the larger parts you see are moving the entire word while also giving those little bits of interest. So this is some subtle motion and some severe motion all in one. So it's pretty interesting. I think this Thursday we're starting particles. So it's really going to be fun and interesting because particles are used in special effects, video games. You could use them for anything really. So it's a great time saving device and I'm going to explain it simply in a way that people understand and be able to apply it creatively. After we cover particles, you'll be able to break down a lot of Hollywood visual effects that you see because uh, it's really, you know, always go back to the four pillars, position, scale, rotation, opacity. Then you throw in the new stuff you learn, masks, mats, blending modes, texture, you know, displacement, turbulent displace, things like that. And then once you see particles, you'll start tying it all together. If you want to bring an After Effects project you've worked on into an another After Effects project, just go File, Import File, or double click in the empty space. Then import it and you'll get your folders here. This is why it pays to be organized. 